no ko, bum, piektā epizoda jau ir būri, uh, fantasisks pay-per-view turnīrs mums pagājušā nedēļā, nevien cīņi nelika vilties, tik daudz finiši. Septiņi pirmā raunda finiši bija šā turnīrā, kas ir pielīdzināms UFC rekordam, tā kā jā, par garlaicību neviens pavisam noteikti nevarēs sūdzēties. Pereira uztaisīja vienu no gada varbūt lielākajiem apsatiem. Ja to tā var nosaukt patiesībā, jo Lai arī Adesanya bija favorīts, bet ja kāds viņu gāzīs no troņa, ja tīpaši cīnoties stājā, tas viss ir vienīgais vīrs, kurš to spēja izdarīt, viņš arī to izdarīja. Lai gan arī pēc punktiem viņš biedzinējos pirms piektā raunda, bet viņa trenera korpusa viņu uzmundrināja, teica, piecas minūtes un tu būsi čempions. Un jā, pāri jau atceties atkal ironiski, ka tas pats kreisais sāķis piebeidza visu un atkal Adesanya savainoja par eiru. Pirmā raunda beigās, kur viņa nedaudz paglāba beigas signāls kur arī var vilkt paralēles ar viņu abu otro cīņu kickboksā, kur bija li- ļoti līdzīga situācija. Tad Saimiņa gandrīz piebeidz piešlaicīgi, un pēc tam per eira atnāca atpakaļ un nakautēja viņu. Jā, un viss cīņa par eira lika virs uz spiedienu, griezi nost lenčus, atspied Ada Saimiņu pret burmā, bet šķita, ka viņš ne- neizdara sitiens, negāzē, tā teikt, pietaupās varbūt pirmo reizi piecu raundu MMA cīņai. Bet piektajā raundā gan, mēs redzējām, viņš darīja to pašu, bet viņš arī laida vaļā savus rokas un parādīja, kāpēc viņam ir iesaukt po atan, ja Portugāja valodā tas būtu akmens rokas. Tā kā viņš parādīja piektajā raundā, ka viņam ir akmens rokas un nakautai adesāņu vēlreiz. Daudz varbūt runāja, ka varu par ātru, es arī sākumā domāju, ka par ātru apturēt cīņu, jo titulu cīņā tīpaši šitādā vajadzēja ļaut varbūt kādam nokrist. Bet tajā pašā laikā Mars Godards viens no labākajiem tiesnešiem un paskatoties vēlreiz cīņus piekrīt, ka labs stopiču, jo tur vajadzēja tikai vēl vienu, es ticamā, kad es saņi arī bija tādā pozīcijā, tiesnes paglā, bet es saņi vienkārši no lielāka apkaunojuma, ja tā to var nosaukt. Viņš būtu vienkārši nākaut tāds brutāli nokrits uz zemes. Tāpēc es domāju, pats izrāls, kad es saņi arī nav ko pārmest, viņš diezgan savu stika ārā, palika stāvot kājā, stāvoši tehniskais nakauts, Nav, nav pasaules beigas, bet jā, mums ir jauns čempions vidējā svara divīzijā. Es domāju, vispārjā divīzija šobrīd siekalojās laiza lūpas ieraugot, ka par eira čempions, jo pie šī brīža čempiona pat Marvins Vettori potenciāli varētu kļūt par čempionu, jo nav nekāds noslēpums, ka par eiram wrestling sparters nav augstā līmenī. Gan Vitekers, gan Košta daudz ir daudz lielākā daļa var viņu uzvarēt. Bet es ļoti iespējams, ka būs tūlītais remačs, ko var saprast. Un arī par eiram tas, manuprāt, dar, dar ļoti labi, jo kāpēc gan viņam cīnīties ar wrestleru, ja viņš var vēl vienā kickboks mačā ar Adesāņu piedalīties. Tā kā ļoti aizraujoši būtu paskatīties, kas notiks tālāk. Protams, arī Ķīnas sportista Žanga Veilī uzvarēja Kārlos Pārzu kļuva par otrkārtēju čempionu savā divīzijā. Viņa pat likas pārs izstītais kā amatieri. Teiksim tā, pārbrauc vienkārši ne pār, bez variantiem. Nu, varbūt te nav izbrīnīt tas, ka tas notika parterī. Nevis stāvot kājās, jo kā znam, Žanga Veilī ir straikar vairāk. Vušu sandā bāzes nāk. Un šī bija tikai otrā uzvara ar sāpu žnaukšanas paņēmienu viņai. UFC, otrā cīņā, viņa pēc tam bija uzvarējis ar armbāru, manuprāt. Bet jā, ļoti vieglā cīņā viņa atgūst savu jostu. Un, protams, arī jāpiemina ir Chandlera un porie duels, kur cīņa bija tieši vis tās, ko mēs gaidījām. Fight the night, abi, abi šie stīli, kad teiks, ali, kopā neko citrī nevar gaidīt. Chandleram vienmēr labs uh, plāns, game plāns, taktika saucamā uz cīņā, bet viņš neprot vienkārši lēni strādāt. Ja viņš uz 100 km stundā nepār traukti brauc, un tas viņa stils vienkārši prasa daudz enerģijas, un tālāk jau mēs redzējām porieras uh, pārņēmu situāciju, un nakautēja Chandleru, kas arī ļoti svarīgi bija abiem šiem vīriem, lai noturētos divīzijas LT, tīpaši pie jaunu čempionu šobrīd. Tā kā, jā, arī, arī šo cīmu radzīmēt. Un Frankijs Edgars beidz savu karjeru, diemžēl neveiksmīgs mēdinājums. Šis viņam bija Gutierrez brutāli viņu nakautēja ar frontkiku. Nu, UFC nežēlo savas leģendas bieži vien. Šos jaunos censoņus dod tā vietā Frankijam, aprāt, varēja iedot, nezinu, Dominiku Krūzu vai kādu citu veterānu, kas būtu tāda klasiska cīņa bijusi, bet Tāds laikam ir spēles vārds, veco lauvu izboro jaunajai un neko citi īsti tur nevar piebilst. Bet šodien, šodien man būs ļoti interesants viesas kārt jau reizi. Nordīns Taleps, UFC veterāns ar deviņām UFC cīņām Bellatorā cīnījies, trenējies ar Traistār zālē kopā ar Zorš San Pieru, ar Rory McDonaldu un visiem pārējiem, kas nāk no šīs zāles. 
Un ļoti interesants tas par Nordin Taleb ir tas, ka viņš ir pirmajā vietā pound for pound visā UFC uh, teikdaunu precizitātes uh, procentā. Viņam ir 100% teikdaunu precizitāte, tā kā, kad viņš ir šāvs pēc teikdaunu, viņš ir dabūjis. Un ironiski, ka viņš ir pirmajā vietā, un viņa komandas biedras Džorgs un Pieris ir tikai otrajā. Tā kā mēs parunājam gan par to, gan par viņa karjeru, gan par nākotnes plāniem, gan par to, ko viņš šobrīd īsti dara Dubajā, un vispār par dzīvi kā tādu pafilozofējumu. Tā kā es ceru, ka jūs izbaudīsiet šo epizodu. Ok, Mr. Nordin Taleb, how are you, man? How's life? Hey, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. Hey, life, life, life is good. I'm... Uh, can be worst i'm in dubai like uh, where it's uh, 360 days uh, very sunny and dry as well so but yeah so far so good i'm happy yeah you you already mentioned dubai so i'm going to shoot straight about this yeah. we all know you you were training your whole career right in tristar in montreal yeah. canada yeah montreal canada uh, so like my first question probably will be how did you end up in Dubai? Like from the <laughs> from the cold Montreal to sunny Dubai? Yeah, but the, you know, like you said, you said it all. Like the cold Montreal. Uh, Mia was born in South, in South of France. So I always, I always, I was born in sun, and I always chased the sun in my life. Understand? But uh, I, uh, I ended up in Montreal, and I made most of my career there, and all my career there. By the way, training at Trust Gym. And uh, but I was always chasing the sun. The sun is a uh, is in, in my heart. heart. In my yeah, as soon as I, I as I could, I was traveling to to uh, to go for the sun. Uh, but uh, I didn't do uh, Montreal to uh, to Dubai. Uh, like uh, I had a couple of transitions. I moved first from uh, from Dubai from uh, Montreal to Thailand at first. Uh, so so far so good. It was cool. Then I moved to Thailand to Spain. Mm. Then a little while in uh, in uh, south of France, back home, and then I moved to uh, to Dubai. And why Dubai? Because this last uh, two three years, it was the only the only city uh, was not turning into shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, like it was safe, like uh, no rumors of wars, of a terrorist attack or whatever, uh, economically good. Uh, yeah, it was like a, you know, like a dome. A bubble, yeah. A prison bubble of, uh, you know, like a hint of heaven. Uh, yeah, so I said, oh, why not? I think it was like, for me, in my head, it was the obvious destination for me, uh, the next step. Like here is very safe. Uh, it's very very pleasant to live here. Uh, you see crazy stuff like a, you know, like a, like a Lamborghinis, like crazy uh, <laughs> skyscrapers, uh, scrapers. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the big buildings, you know, the skyscrapers, no, but skyscrapers, skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All right, okay. so English here. Yeah. So yeah, it's very inspiring. You know, it's very inspiring. So. So yeah, and uh, most of the population here is young. They train uh, because uh, the UFC events. Uh, so MMA is growing a lot here. Before it was jujitsu ju- uh, here mm-hmm. a lot, and now MMA step by step is uh, is taking over. So it's like yeah, it was it was the the, the logic uh, next step for me. I think. I mean, there's a reason why UFC went there as well, right? The Fight Island stuff and everything. That was the only place that was actually doing something. I mean, the whole exactly. world was on so the same reason, same reason like me, basically, yeah. Yeah. So you're actually training. You're, you're training one of our boys, like one of Latvia's uh, most famed fighters, Edgar Scrivers. Yeah. As you guys can see, you have his cap on as well. I've actually heard yeah. a lot of a lot of good stuff about you, man. I've heard. Uh, thank you. You're the best. You're the best MMA trainer in Dubai, basically. That's what. Thank I'm you. I appreciate, you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. I've heard a lot of good stuff, and I actually believe it because you know I've I've, I've heard in detail how you work and everything. So uh, thank you. Yeah, but you open your own gym right now or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I open, uh, open my, my, my own gym. Uh, the name um, uh, it's a TNT. Okay, I took it uh, over my uh, my nickname. The Nordin um, Taleb. 
Yeah, team team not in talent. Team exactly. Nordic. That's what, that's what, yeah, that's what it stands for. But also TNT, it's like a bomb. So I've always been like a, a na- natural uh, explosive uh, guy. You know what I mean? I was known for this uh, in the but in the gym and in the fight. You know what I mean? Like my explosiveness. So okay. TNT and team not in Taleb. Yeah, it was kind of a good thing. Yeah. So, so yeah, match. put it together. Yeah, perfect match. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, I've created my own uh, my own concept, uh, the, the the colors and everything. So yeah, here I am, here I am, and I put like I designed the gym uh, like uh, every square centimeters. Uh, it's by me for and for specific reason. For example, this uh, walls behind me uh, is to remind me uh, the bricks of uh, Montreal. That's cool, right, man. And, uh, and there's a lot of details like this in the gym. Who reminds me my. Uh, yeah, basically, it's the, it's the map of myself a little bit. The of your life, so to speak. Yeah, of my life a little bit, yeah. Who, who knows me? But I know myself better, but I mean, who knows me a little bit? They, they, they will check some stuff. They will say, oh, okay, I know what you put in this. I know what you put that. So, yeah, that was my game. You know, it was kind of a game for me uh, to, uh, to, to do so. So, yeah, I'll be it that way. Is Screamers Karate going to be in those uh, facilities as well? Yes, Screamers Karate, yes, Screamers karate uh, is in, uh, under the discussion. Uh, look, I love everything about Edgar. Uh, like, he's a crazy athlete. He's a crazy martial artist. Uh, like, how, the, how, how he carries himself, uh, the way he trains, the way he thinks. Uh, like, yeah, this guy is a true champion inside out. Okay. And... Uh, I got to know him uh, uh, from another gym where, where I was training, where where he was coming to take my, my some of my classes, and uh, yeah, step by step, day by day, we we got to know each other more and uh, more. The day goes, and more I, I appreciate him a lot. So when I did this uh, this gym, uh, so at some point when I grow the the. Like I wanted to grow the like the, the program, what I was offering in the gym, and I was thinking about uh, karate and stuff, and like, oh man, Edgar is the is the guy, like uh, like the guy. I know I know this guy. If he say yes, it's like he will not disappoint. He's like like what I mean. It's like uh, it will be under his banner, so under his name. Mm-hmm. So it's like he, he put a lot of pride of himself. I mean, so he's he, uh, he's he, the hardest worker I know, hands hard down. Yeah, I, I remember when we were we were actually in I Thailand. I was doing the class. He was still working for for. Yes. He was still working out for one hour, one hour and a half after the class. And that's the attitude. I was the, I was the same, and that's why when I noticed that, I said, "Whoa, th- this guy is something else." Yeah. You see similarities, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see similarities. I, I, love, I loved it. I remember when we were in Thailand in Tiger Muay Thai or Phuket Top Team. I don't remember. It was a long long time ago. I remember okay. he was. You know, we were tired after a whole day of, you know, training or the sun and everything. I'm tired. I'm going to bed and I see him, you know, like writing in his notebook. And I'm thinking, what are you, what is he doing? What is this? And actually he told me, this is how you get a PhD in fighting. He was writing all the combos down. He's obsessed and you have to be, right? You have to be obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, you have to be obsessed. Oh, you go nowhere. Oh, you, yeah. You can have like a... An average, like anybody, like can take the decision. Okay, I want to be a fighter. There's not like a special, uh, special thing to be a fighter. It's like it's more about a personal decision and the direction you take in life. But when you want to be like above the average, that's all it takes. You have to be like crazy about this sport, like crazy, crazy, obsessional. You know what I mean? So yeah, he definitely one of them. <laughs> He's a psychopath of the sport, <laughs> most definitely. So fully he thinks about it. Yeah. Nordine, how how did you start yeah. in the fight game? You started quite late, right? Yeah, I started. I started late. Yeah, uh, but basically, I always was chasing martial art. Okay, but when I was back back then, when I was a very young, like before teenager and everything. Um, it, it wasn't so developed where I was born, mm-hmm. where I was living, uh, mm-hmm. and it was uh, so limited. Where, and me, I, had, I don't know. I want because I, I I learned with my brother. Okay, my brother put me into this. My grand brother, and I was looking up to him. Uh, so I had uh, his uh, teaching direction a little bit, you know. So growing up, I, ne- I never find like. <laughs> This kind of uh, 
people who give me the right attention for me to to know to to uh, to learn something. So it was too much average, too much something like this. So I just I just didn't want to get involved in martial art. And uh, but it was always inside of my mind. And when I had like a friend, for example, who uh, who was living in another city and he was mm-hmm. doing kickboxing and he was coming back to the to where where we are, you know, in the south of France. Uh, I was practicing with him and he was showing me some skills and I was always like, oh, man, like you this. progress in school. <laughs> uh, man, I wish I wish I can uh, I can uh, find a team like this uh, where I can uh, I can learn properly and uh, yeah and train properly. Uh, but it never happened until uh, 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 I uh, I flew to Mexico, no, not to Mexico. The first time it was to I was 19 or something. I wanted to learn capoeira. Oh wow! To Brazil? Yeah, yeah, to Brazil. So I flew to Brazil to to learn capoeira. I wanted to learn, but at the heart of the sport, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I fully commit uh, to this. But Brazil was very dangerous. Oh yeah, um, I didn't feel safe. Uh, you have always to watch your back, okay? <laughs> always, always, always. Especially and if you're not a local, right? Yeah, especially yeah, for sure. If you know, you're not a local. You don't act like it. Like you immediately uh, spotted, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I I went back from Brazil. I tried to continue uh, capoeira. I found the club. Uh, uh, like, uh, but it was uh, like uh, almost one hour from where I was living. So. Pff, I couldn't keep up with it. And then I flew to Mexico. I was like 23, 24. And, uh, and yeah, I started Mexico. Muay Thai. What brought yeah, you to Mexico? Mexico? Mex- what brought me to Mexico is uh, one of my best friends was living there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, he said, oh, when you tired, he-, he told me before, like when you tired about uh, Brazil, he said, uh, I moved with my parents uh, in Mexico. So, so, so come one over, dangerous come place over. to another. <laughs> yeah, place to another, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, I said okay. Uh, so when I went back to 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 uh, to Brazil, I, I had to take care of my financial uh, issue. So I worked hard all summer because m- where I was living, it was a summer jobs. Okay, mm-hmm. in the winter there is nothing. You work nine to five. You have a shit salary. Uh, but when you want to make the, the good money, you have to work in uh, summer jobs. So I found my summer jobs and I, I, I stacked some money and I immediately in September, I flew to Mexico and uh, I found a, I found a Motai, a Motai uh, school there. Mm-hmm. So I started Motai there and the, the guy was very good. He was Mexican guy, but he looked like a, he looked like a Thai. Uh, <laughs> even physically, everything is yeah. like, his physical attribute was like a very like a Thai guy. You know what I mean? I thought he was Thai. That's not a bad mix as well, right? Mexican, Thai. Mexicans are known for their grit and boxing, you know, all this. Yeah, Mexican plus Thai could be a good mix. Yeah. At first, I thought I would, I, would, uh, I would try boxing. But it was the gym I found, it was a little bit uh, too much ghetto. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's not like it was dangerous because I felt much safer in Mexico than in Brazil. But uh, I had like my, uh, my flashbacks from, from Brazil and I see a little bit ghetto and I was immediately like, oh, I don't want to get into trouble, you know, by my past experiences, yeah. you know? So I went to another gym who's a world known, uh, very famous, is the Gold's Gym. Oh, I know. Yeah, there is everywhere Gold's Gym, okay? And in this gym, there was a little capsule who was a uh, Motai. So I signed up in this uh, Motai courses and I, 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 like, I like everything about the guy, like the way he teach and everything and and uh, yeah, he brought me uh, very quick to to uh, like. Uh, you learn decent... quickly. You learn quickly. Yeah, I learned quickly, and uh, he like he, he showed me the way to uh, like to do and everything. So yeah, in six months I had uh, like a decent the first fight. Uh, uh, no, no first fight. No, no, no. Like uh, sparring and everything. Okay, with, uh, okay. I was I was able to spar with uh, people who was practicing uh, Muay Thai for five six years after mm-hmm. six months. So it was like, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was decent, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but at some point uh, I left uh, Mexico and I went to Montreal. To Quebec. That's when you went to Quebec. So is that like a natural pl- place for French-speaking guys to go to, to Firas, to TriStar? What, back in the um, day, was it like yeah, that as well? A lot of French doesn't speak English. 
And uh, for sure, when they when they travel to Canada, they thinking immediately of uh, Montreal because it's French speaking. But me, it wasn't the the the, the reason completely. Is because uh, I met a girl in Mexico mm-hmm. who was my uh, who become my my long time uh, girlfriend. Okay, and uh, and I and I moved to Montreal uh, because of her. Okay, I wanted to continue this relationship. Uh, but she could have been from Vancouver. It would have been the same result, you understand? So, but it was uh, Quebec. It was meant to be. It was meant to be, exactly, like you said. So, yeah, I followed the, I followed the signs and I followed this direction. And yeah, and, I, and at first I was looking for, uh, for Motai school because uh, for, I wanted to continue Motai, you know? yeah, yeah. But what I found uh, it was super average, super like a low level, not of what I, I found in in Mexico. So I was oh, again, oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to shop another maybe another another <laughs> another gym, okay? Yeah. So I was speaking to my uh, to, the, to the brother of my girlfriend, okay? Uh, and he said, oh. Uh, I know you like uh, you like MMA because I was a big fan of Vanderle Silva, you know what I mean? And Vito okay. Belfort and Jack Lido. And he said, oh, you know, if you want to practice MMA, uh, this I know school a place. Is, <laughs> I know a place, exactly. Uh, his name is Trust Gym, blah, blah. And everybody goes there. Everybody goes to this gym. Everybody is good, they go to this gym. But he, is, he was not the truster like he, like he becomes, huh? Mm-hmm. He was the old school truster. Okay, it was only two guys, good guys, <coughs> um, like who, who really made it at the international mm-hmm. scene. Okay, it was uh, George St. Pierre and David yep. Loiseau. And at this time, when I arrived, uh, George St. Pierre had his first fight in UFC, and uh, David Loiseau was already in UFC. So David Loiseau was the first to be in the UFC. <coughs> so you were there at the beginning. Yeah. yeah, beginning, of, yeah, mm, yeah, kind of, kind, kind of. of, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, beginning of what people know, but uh, yeah, Trasa is the biggest story before me. Well, listen, there's a, I gotta, I gotta touch this. You, you, mm-hmm. you mentioned George St. Pierre. We all know George is, you know, not a wrestler, but he's good at wrestling, you know, takedowns yeah. and everything. But there's one interesting stat about you, Nordin, like <laughs> <Tell me>. uh, <laughs> the precision of takedowns like what, what, what was the stat you were ahead of him uh the most uh highest oh, percentage yeah, yeah. of yeah, takedowns yeah, is for you the actually one. you're yeah, the number yeah, one for takedown precision one. in the ufc <laughs> more than george st pierre so tell me how does a guy that was training in mexico muay thai get to this the <laughs> I know the GSP from from he took something from karate, right? The timing, the distance for the takedowns. Yeah, was, but what about you? Like, yeah, what's your secret? No, I, look, I, I, I don't know. With Georgia, we laughed about it when I uh, when I saw it. I sent him, and uh, we we laughed about it because I was he was like at the second position or something like this. I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> he was like, no, no, you are you are an incredible athlete. You're so explosive and athletic. It's like you. You deserve it. I think you you deserve the spot. But uh, we we were laughing because he's uh, <laughs> he's the he's the goat, you know. Yeah, I mean George St. Pierre is known for his he's known for, for his takedowns, for his control yeah. and everything. And yeah, but look, but, uh, I, I tint I definitely George uh, I definitely tinted on George. Uh, the way I approach my takedowns, it's uh, it's uh, like I would say ninety nine percent. Influenced by him, be influenced by him because I, I observed him a lot, and also I was his uh, main partner uh, for many camps. Okay, mm-hmm. and even out, out of camps, uh, I correspond to you know to the body type and everything, and the same way category. Mm-hmm. So it made sense. Uh, but he, you know, he, he, me, I was a good striker, and he, he had to take me down if he doesn't want me to like to give him a hard time mm-hmm. in sparring. So he has to time me, he has to outsmart me to, to get in there. So he succeeded for sure. Huh? George is George. But I, I, at some point, I really questioned like, uh, how do, does he get in? How how he got too fast? How he got so fast? How he got me in this takedown? So I started to study a lot and not only when I spar with him, but also when he spar with others, you know? You watch him, and yeah. The, yeah, watch him a lot, watch him a lot. And then... And then uh, we, we got close to, uh, to, to each other, you know, we become uh, very good friends. And 
like like Edgar is is all is always picking one of two of his training partners and is working extra after class. Mm-hmm. That's what we were doing with uh, with George at several several uh, occasions. After the class, we were we were going apart, like just him and me, and we were like uh, setting up our our striking with the takedowns. So because now we were not putting out ourselves at risk to get punched yeah. because we choke each other. We just like drilling, okay? Iron sharpens so, iron, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we're not like a, like a worried about him punching me or, or do something. He was just drilling, do his takedown. I was drilling my striking and do my takedowns. <laughs> but in in a uh, inspiring session, he was shooting me uh, like maybe sometime on the very good days. He was he was scoring like two or three takedowns on me, like very good. You know what I mean? Uh, per, per round of, of uh, training, but when we were drilling, uh, it was it was drilling like ten takedowns uh, in the space of one minute, two minutes, and we That's were good. doing for 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 one hour straight. So imagine Drilling. Drill how to many formation I collected, of right from, from both from both sides. I mean, it's not a coincidence, people, right? The top two guys. Are you yeah. and him? It's not a coincidence that you two guys are top on top of the list. Exactly. Yeah, and we were we, we are also what the, the common point on together also. We were we are the only two who are ranked top five on the striking accuracy and defense accuracy. I mean, Str- wow. striking defense accuracy. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like it cannot be coincidence. No? Okay, we we like we. Is yeah, this something we, that? Piras, Piras tried to drill in you guys, or is this something you guys oh, figured yeah, on your yeah. own? Yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. Piras is very, is definitely a, He's very intelligent a coach. Every step of us, you know, he, like he, he's observing, he's learning for every, from everybody, uh, and we were learning a lot from, from him also. You know, he, he, Firas is very smart. He's very, I, very, I remember very, very I, smart. I, I met him once, I talked to him in Germany when he was cornering Nasrat. Uh, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. yeah we, we were yeah back in the day he was so yeah. such a down-to-earth guy and so intelligent about the he sport is. yeah, yeah. Very, very much so that's not a coincidence know, that is. you're a good it coach is. now as well exactly yeah 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 but you know his, his passion is a uh, is a martial art okay mixed martial arts like true pa- patient okay mm-hmm. like he like 24 hours okay but also uh, uh he graduate as a uh, philosophy. Okay, so that's a good it's mix. Cool. That's a good so, mix. He can put you in here and physically, right? Exactly, and he, yeah. has, he has the ability. He has the ability to to take a very complicated uh, technique and to simplify the explanation of it. You know, so yeah. you can understand. You can understand a, a very complex uh, combination or, or, or jujitsu or grappling drill. Uh, but he has the yeah the ability to put it in your mind like the matrix, you know. Mm-hmm, exactly. He, he plug it into into your brain and boom, <laughs> yeah. you it. and he make you make you uh, uh, drill this technique so much, then then it's is your automatic. So it's forever. inside yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it becomes automatic like this. No, uh, the, definitely the the Tristar system training is is very 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 good. I remember I we we and Edgar. Yeah, I remember me and Edgar uh, used to talk that Firas could be a good fit for a coach for him, you know, back a long time ago already. We wanted to maybe go to Montreal, train there. And it's actually, it's 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 fun to see now that he met you now in Dubai, right? You're a product of yeah, Firas. Crazy, yeah. You're training him. You, you see how it all worked out quite interesting, right? Yeah. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe it's... Yeah, me too. Things are aligned like this and... Yeah, and uh, my, with my with my uh, teaching because he, he was taking the class, so, so he, he, I'm not at the level of for us uh, to to of teach course. people. Okay, he has he has as much uh, teaching experience than me. I have a fighting experience. Yeah. Okay, so it's like he's for for 20 years he's been teaching people. So imagine his knowledge, how he can uh, he can make you process the the technique, you know. <laughs> but uh, at least he had a glimpse. Of uh, what it can be and the way uh, I explain because it's hundred percent the way. Uh, Plus, you're still a young guy. Coach. You still have a lot to grow as a coach as well. You know, yeah, sure, of for course. Sure. 
Yes. Well, you can be uh, you can be a coach and a teacher for for until uh, 60 70 for life until you're gone basically but exactly but, yeah. but listen we're talking about uh Nordin as a coach what about Nordin okay. as a fighter are you finished done no uh, more yeah i think so yeah, yeah 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 i think so like what i'm about because sometimes i, I got the itch still, okay, you know i wanted I mean? to tell you about the itch you do yeah, get yeah, the itch yeah i got it <laughs> Yeah, you still have it, and this I w- it would be forever. I think. Uh, yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm like a, I put the idea in my head that then this each would be forever, because I always when I see somebody like with the decent skills of sparring, I immediately want to be okay. You want sure to jump up. in? I put I, my glove. Yeah. Okay, let's practice a little bit, and I mean, I just step in randomly in the mat like this. So what I want to do, maybe exhibition fight. You know what I mean, just to have fun, nothing on the line. Yeah, you understand. Like, uh, yeah, just basically, uh, just having having fun and pleasure, uh, and yeah, and don't don't get matched with a with a, you know, with a serial killer or something. <laughs> just like, yeah, having yeah. Having, having some some fun. You know what I mean? Having the stage moment a little bit again. Having the, mean, the crowd. This doing. this sport, combat sports, is probably one of the hardest sport to leave. You know, it's so it's so adrenaline filled it's so intimate it's you, you just get the itch like like you said your whole life you will never be like you know oh i'm good now you you'll get this all the yeah, time no, and... never be over it. Never yeah, be never. Over. you just need to if you are if you're lucky enough in life uh you need to have uh, control you know what i mean yeah you need to have control and if you can like it would be a disaster if like uh, for example i'm 40 45 and i'm desperately uh, needed looking for, for money. money yeah yeah and i sign up with an organization just for money and the money is the is the lead of my decision you know yeah this this would be would be a uh, devastating i think i have a lot yeah. of friends that have been this route and it's never good it never ends yeah. good but if it's for passion and you have the opportunity just to 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 make like a you know what I mean? An exhibition for charity mm-hmm. event or something like this. Yeah, it's all pleasure, all fun. There's nothing on the line. And uh, yeah, that's it. You just promote your, a little bit yourself and the gym while doing the, the thing. You don't especially want to knock out the guy. Yeah. You just want to... You know what I mean? Like, it's it's different perspective, you know, a different angle to see it. But like uh, Sancha is doing... You know Sancha yeah. from Motai? Yeah, Sancha, of course, of course. Yeah. Legend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so yeah, I would like to do something uh, like this. You know what I mean? Like uh, serious, but not serious. I mean, you 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 look like you're all set. You know, you live in Dubai. You have a loving family with you there. Everything's yeah. fine in Nordine's life. No, no, no need for you know going crazy back in the fight game. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Alhamdulillah. maybe you you get the thrill through your students, right? You get coach them exactly. and all this. Yeah, you get, yeah, get, you get so that excitement. excitement. Exactly. I got so much excitement to see them succeed the technique, uh, like even su- uh, succeed some fights. Uh, I brought my first my first uh, student here in Dubai, mm. uh, uh, and he's a local guy. Okay. Um, and uh, I brought him on his uh, first jiu-jitsu tournament. Then we won. Okay, we, we killed everybody in the roster. Uh, and I brought him to his first MMA fight uh, last week, and he won his fight. Amateur? Amateur, yeah, amateur for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the first first ever of everything. But he, uh, I start with him from zero. Like he yeah. had no, like he, he was training since one month, searching himself where he can train, what he can do. And then he, uh, we found each other, uh, like more or less the same time I, I met uh, with uh, Edgar. Edgar, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and since and since that day uh, we we training together, blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, I brought him to the to the fight, and yeah, yeah. he won. So it's very good, and I, I lived through his uh, success. I was uh, I was very very happy. It's another satisfaction. It's not for yourself. It's for him. So it's, it's just a different feeling. But it is uh, definitely on the satisfying satisfaction level. Uh, it's quite the same. I remember when I was you know back back. When Edgar's was still competing in MMA, not in karate combat, I was uh, cornering him for a lot of fights. And I remember I, u- I always used to get a lot more nervous when he's fighting than, than I would be myself, you know, because I think you yeah. would get the same yeah. adrenaline from your students, yeah. probably. Yeah, it's completely a different feeling, you know. Yeah. Uh, I start to understand my, by my coach's side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. 
for me, sometimes I I wasn't the, the the most easy guy to uh, to coach. To coach is uh, like I'm okay. Like you can coach me. I'm not stu- I'm not like I'm stubborn. But I mean, I, I believe in your knowledge. I be, but I mean, yeah. if you prove me, like if you prove me, and I see and I tried, like I see, not not everything. No, Puras was for one class. He was showing like a sometimes up to five technique a class. Mm-hmm. You have to remember it. So you, you have to remember it, but he is very gifted huh, to, to make you uh, remember it. But I mean, it's also uh, uh, the thing that not all the techniques fits you. So sometimes you, you like, mm, oh, yes, you know, you yes, too yes. much that like you, you knock your, your, your head on, on this and you cannot go. So you have to just to move on and yeah. get into the next. That's what a good coach is about, right? To tell that what fits and what doesn't fit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but I, but I've been uh, sometimes I know a nightmare for 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 some of my uh, my coaches, especially multi. Uh, uh, but I ask for forgiveness so many times <laughs> because, because I you know I understand you know it's like it's like a, it's like because they are they're very taking uh, personally mm-hmm. uh, um, the the way they teach because that's their knowledge they give it to you uh, you represent. Uh, Please, so you represent your own self also. Agree. But you represent 100%. a little bit better because they, they 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 stick to you. You know what I mean? So it's normal that they, they they involve a lot. You know what I mean? And the involvement is it's a lot. Uh, so uh, how I can say? Uh, so yes, yeah, so sometimes I've been I've been hard. I, I can imagine and that's we're all, we're all like this. We're all like this. Yeah. We all have our demons it's parents, inside. It's only when you are. It's only when you become parents then yeah. you understand. You understand. The, the yeah. 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 Before What's, you're like, oh, I don't. If there is food in the fridge, it's because my parents bought. Oh, it is like you. You kind of uh, like. Uh, I don't know. I, I know what you mean. You yeah. Understand, eh? Listen, so, I yeah, have to I ask you about yeah. last weekend. Only about one fight, I'll ask you. About a striking matchup we had in UFC main event, Israel Adesanya against Adesanya. Um, uh, Alex Pereira. What did you think yeah. about this fight? Did you watch it? Um, score, score, score wise, I uh, will give one to uh, two. Three? One, yeah, no, no, two. No, for sure, obviously the last one, but I mean, uh, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Pereira, uh, one round to Pereira. Pereira, yeah. Pereira three, had three, the three. first one, Adesanya two, three, four. And of course, uh, the, the knockout at the end, so by Pereira. Uh, but uh, I feel Yezi uh, was a different guy than he fought first, for sure. He of had uh, progressed a lot. I feel like he was better. He did good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he did good. Like he was surprised a little bit and he has to break the ice at the first round. You know, it might not be easy to face a guy than the UFC. Uh, Push, brought him to kick your ass. You know? Yeah, exactly. They feel kind of a conspiration against That's you, exactly you know? what they did. Hey, yeah. exactly. But I mean, it's good and not good. It's good for business because you like it's it. all about the uh, money. <laughs> it's all about the money. But Adesanya make the money also uh, over it. You know what I mean? You need this drama. You need to create something. Of and course. he's all about uh, this drama. He, lo- he normally he loves it, but now he was not on his favor. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, he was against him. So I think the first round he was like confused, but. Two, two, three, four. Like, okay, I'm here. I'm the king. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, the the fourth, the, the the fifth round. I think he got uh, Glover. He got like his team hyped him up big time before the fifth round. Yeah, Five minutes to become a champion. You know, I rem- I forgot what they <laughs> said, but they were pumping him the f up, and he just went out, switched it yeah. on. Put it on, you know, aggression, pressure, it's pressure. Like so many times, I, I feel like even the, the I, I don't, I cannot say which precisely, uh, what rounds, but I mean, two, three, four. So many times, Pereira had him against the cage mm-hmm. and he didn't do nothing. He, like, exactly. He, just, he had this moment like. He I think he was worried off. about the five round fight. That's what I think. Well, Probably, he was maybe yeah, trying to, yeah. you know, balance his uh, cardio a bit. I don't know. But I actually said the same thing yesterday. Like he was mm-hmm. cutting off the angles, pushing him against the fence, but he didn't do anything. But in the fifth round, he did. He launched. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't put it. I feel that uh, when I, when I uh, noticed that, I feel like he, he could have uh, he could have do this overturn at any mm-hmm. moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you could feel the intensity in the air all the time. Yeah. 
اكيد يعني اول مره اسمع هذا هذا سامي شو سام تايم اوسو اي دونت ريمبر اكزاكتلي ذا فايت بس اي ثينك واز ا وور ريال فيس اي واز دوينغ ماي جوب اي واز بوشينغ لا لا اند وين هي واز اجينست ذا فانس يا لايك اي دي بوت ذا تريجر يا وات ناو And I and I froze for like a split second or half second, but it's enough in fight. Huh? It's like forever. And then I missed the opportunity. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can, I can understand. But at some point, that's the the also the the job of the of the the corners. Yeah, and they did super good. And boom, yeah. I mean, it's funny actually because he could lose to Vettori or any like any other contender, right? Because he's let's be honest, he has no wrestling. For Herrera. No, there's a lot of guys. Everyone in the division is like licking their lips right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, it was just it's just like a nightmare for Adesanya. Yeah, yeah. Because Adesanya Definitely. has like zero zero wrestling. Mm-hmm. Like not zero, but compared to, to to MMA roster, you know. Yeah. But he can I defend. But I mean to o- offensively wrestling, he has nothing, you know. I'm Sometimes not, I, I spread too much on my uh, on my thoughts. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. The more you talk, the better. <laughs> So I don't I don't even remember what what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, the 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 Carrera, the Adesanya. Yeah, yes. Carrera, yeah. Yes, that Adesanya doesn't have. Yeah, Adesanya doesn't have. Adesanya you know, done. but Pereira even has less. I mean, Adesanya's training with wrestlers. Yeah. He's been in MMA for a long time, but Pereira Pereira just you know, I'm just gonna go train with Glover Teixeira, and but it worked. I mean, it worked. <laughs> yeah, but fuck it, Teixeira is a, is a beast, man. He's going to fight Yiri Prochaska soon as well. So oh, they have, have both might just... have belts. But listen, there's one, one thing about them. For example, they're talking about immediate rematch, right? If yeah. I'm Pereira, I'm taking the immediate rematch, right? Why should I fight a wrestler, who, a guy who's going to wrestle me, or if I can kickbox Adesanya again, right? Yeah. But they, I mean, if, if Pereira take another fight, uh, because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I believe we take care we'll take him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe uh, who else? Not Vitaker. Vit- not Vittori. Not Vittori. I don't think Vittori has a chance. Vitaker uh, probably could get a shot. Vitaker, yeah. Who who else uh, is active now? Jared Cannon, yeah. Who else do they have there? There's no yeah, no, no yeah. big guys. No. That division is not that uh, good right But now. The fight to make sense is yeah, the rematch. Yeah, the one you, I mean the yeah. one you fight. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. I mean, they will, they will, they will milk the cow as as much as they yeah. can, you know, as much as they can <laughs> for the Pereira project. Yeah, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's good for him. And he wanted, he want fighters fight, eh? and that's how you make your your bread. So you are, you mm-hmm. got to fight. So the drama is here. Make the I most agree. of it. Do you watch UFC fights regularly or not as much? But, yeah, I watch. I watch. Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah, watch the watch, other watch, fights as well? Uh, yes, yeah, Chandler some... Poirier, Chandler Poirier. Watch, yeah, yeah, fantastic fight, man! What a bang! But th- those two guys never disappoint. Yeah, never, that fight never. was never. exactly were... what we expected. Oh, fight of the night, oh, Chandler God. going for. You know what I, I thought about Chandler? Time again in the role. Yeah, you know what I thought about Chandler? He always has a good game plan. Like he's just yeah. too quick to execute it. You know, he's like 100 miles an hour. He's He like has the right idea, but just <laughs> calm down a little bit, you know? Man, he's a beast, man. He has so much fire inside him. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. That's, 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 the, yeah, that's how he goes. Huh? He, he, goes he goes hard and, and he doesn't back down. No, never back down. Until it, like you die or I die. That's it. Yeah. End of story. Kill or be killed, right? Yeah, kill or be killed. I, I think that's his mindset because it's not possible otherwise. Because yeah. if you are like just a little bit of sanity, you would just like a, okay, no, get you get you hit, but without getting hit uh, as much. But he me like he doesn't give a single shit. Like okay, I'm a fighter. I fight. I, I assume everything, all the consequences will come with it, and uh, let's go all the way, baby. Yeah, and Poirier the same uh, same mentality is like unbreakable. Poirier mindset. is one of the guys that really deserves everything he has. You know, pa- oh, yeah. like he oh, has to say, so paid in full. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so the way so where much. he came from and all how, how much work he put in, how much he deserves everything. But listen, yeah. we're, we're talking about kill or be killed. You might have yeah. one of the most satisfying knockouts in your resume. 
You know, do you know which Silva? one I'm talking about? Uh, Eric Silva? <laughs> Eric Silva. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember when I was watching the fight, I, I don't know yeah. who I was with, but we were a big company a long, long time ago. And he did that, you know, fake glove touch thing that a lot of people do. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. That was, I, I just remember the whole place going nuts when you knocked him out after that. You know, <laughs> karma, karma at its finest. What round karma, was it? Did yeah, you yeah, knock him out in the same round? Huh? Did, you knock, did you knock him out in the same round or was later? Uh, no. It, I, wait, wait. No, it happened in the first round and I uh, uh, knocked him out in the second round. Yeah, for yeah, people that don't know. Man. Yeah, the fight started. No, 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 because they made the highlight like a... Yeah, they made the right away punishment, yeah. Immediate punishment. But no, no, it didn't happen this way. Uh, it was on the second round. Yeah, and the, the true story is like, at the end of the fight, when I went down and I got... Uh, uh, I did my post-interview and everything, I didn't remember this moment. You know, You rarely remember what happens in a fight, right? Uh, it was like, it's oh, like disappeared. <laughs> Never yeah, he happened. did that to you. And I was like, I don't understand what you say. It's like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but he, you know, he do the cheap shot on you. I said, look, a fight is a fight. <laughs> and yeah, they, you don't even remember. Uh, what he did, what he did, it was legal. and, uh, and uh, just It was legal, it. yeah. It was yeah. legal. It was a bitch move, so, but it was legal. Yeah. Yeah, a bitch move, that's it. I, and uh, some people got to try. Yeah? Probably maybe he sensed then, okay, he had to destabilize me because I was too much of focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he didn't like it. And yeah, with some other guy, to... maybe it could have worked. You know, maybe some guy would be rattled by that. Yeah. No, because he hit me hard, huh? Yeah, yeah. I rewatched uh, it I said, yesterday. Uh, I checked it, earlier, it was like a bang. I mean, like a good one on the orbital or somewhere here. It was a clean shot, and he even smiled after that. He hit you, and he was yeah, like, yeah. Mm. "It was like, mm, yeah, let's go, yeah. let's do it." Yeah, but you, you, you seem like a guy, you know that, you know, like like you said in the beginning, explosive. You know, you, you seem like you can switch that anger button on. You know, like controlled yeah. anger, like explosive yeah, and everything. I always had this. I always had this and uh, be, even before martial arts it was is is who I am yeah right? yeah I mean his point was like a very like a quick and uh, fast response yeah uh, fast twitch even, even back in school yeah fast twitcher like even back back uh, in school when I was a teenager uh, like uh, the the teachers who teach sports you know at school mm -hmm. uh, they noticed it they told me like that was a super fast twitch uh, so yeah, and on the like the sprints, like yeah. the sixty meters or the one hundred meters, I was one of the best. Yeah, same for and me. I, I had the good stamina. I had so good stamina. So yeah, yeah. but I, I had the I, I believe I had the, the physical ability uh, to go on any sports. Mm -hmm. Who just you just need to I just, I just need to like the sport and to to commit. Uh, you could tell it. by your fighting style that you, you you're this type. I love watching fighters like you, this this explosive, fast twitch fighters. You know, you you throw middle kicks, low kicks, everything. You you can tell that pop in those shots. You know, pop, 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 like with a what do you call it? But <laughs> when you whip someone, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. it's the yeah. same with you. And so I love this. watching. I don't like to throw. I don't like to throw my my shots. Uh, you know, there's a lot of telegraphed. Who, yeah, a lot of fighters. You know that. There's like 50% who goes out. You see it out. from the... Yeah. Exactly. So me, I throw less, but when I throw, uh, I know it goes, it goes with to bad the With bad intentions. You throw it with bad intentions. intentions. Yeah, sure. And Eric Silva yeah. got, <laughs> got that bad intention afterwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, probably the most satisfying one. One of the most satisfying yeah, knockouts yeah. ever, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people liked it. Huh? Like, uh, yeah. in, in two days, it was millions of views on this highlight. Yeah, uh, and it's very satisfying. But I was like, uh, I don't know. I react strange about it. I never, I never took the, you know, the. I, I never took advantage of this way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, always stayed low key and. Uh, you are who you are. You know, you're just being exactly. yourself, and that's it. Exactly. You have to be honest with yourself. Exactly. And don't pretend. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't like fighters. You know, they're just doing stuff to sell the fight but you can tell you can see through him that's not you man come on what, what are you selling uh, he, will, he will look horrible from me exactly yeah yeah he will look like uh, too much too much fake yeah. <laughs> he will not play on my uh, advantage 
So listen, we, the time flew talking to you, actually. This is the probably the quickest one that went by so quickly. So what's next with Nordin Taleb? So you're making your gym. What's what's nearest plans for you? Uh, the nearest plans, yeah, on the, like on the short, midterm. So yeah, it's like to, to continue to, to, grow, uh, to grow this business, mm-hmm. okay, to, uh, to grow TNT. Uh, and yeah, let, let's see where it goes. I want to... Like, I want to 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 get the the guys from kids mm-hmm. and to give them like a, a real follow up. You know what I mean? Uh, because uh, I feel like in, in this society a little bit like uh, it's the, the society is too weak. Mm-hmm. And I, I see the the kids are missing like the the. the like the essential, like the, the discipline, the, the, the consistency. And yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's, it's fading away. I felt remember, it. I, know, it kind of, I remember there was the saying, how, how was the saying? Uh, strong, strong men create easy times, easy times exactly. create weak men, weak men make True. hard times. Yeah. And it's like a circle. We're just in that part of the circle right now, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's like, for example, it's like the 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 the, the people who, who who are able to afford uh, because Dubai hand cheap, huh? mm-hmm. so the, the gym is like it's it's uh, it's 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 expensive a little bit, okay? So people who are able to uh, to afford the, the the this gym facility for their kids, mm-hmm. uh, so they do everything for them. So then they are busy. They give the kids to the nannies. Um, <laughs> Or they are with the with the mom and the father is busy. It's crazy because he's expat. He took a, a huge opportunity uh, for for the business, so he's very busy. He's making a good salary, but he's very good father. He gives everything to his family to be entertained and to be educated and everything. So he provides, but at the same point, he's missing like the the, the leadership of the dad a yes, little bit. I agree. It's me, it's missing home. Okay, so the the kids are becoming like a very soft. And uh, it seems like also in in the sports industry, then uh, then uh, like in the sports industry they become soft also because they don't want to offend, they don't want to uh, you know they want to please too yeah, much. Yes, yes. So, uh, so it's like very yeah. I, I don't like, but I said something to myself. I said I'm not gonna be responsible for for this uh, degradation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna. You're gonna do your yeah, thing. I'm gonna do my thing. I'm not gonna comply to to any uh, standards. It's gonna be my standard, and uh, and yeah, and I believe it. I believe in it because I have a couple of kids. Uh, I I I'm teaching them uh, regularly, and they, they love it. And they 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 came. They were a little bit softy. You know what I mean, and uh, kind of. Uh, it was hard to get their attention because they wanted mm-hmm. to do whatever they want. Play but video I, games I or something. And I recenter and I have their focus. Now they have skills. They can put very uh, complex uh, combination together. So now I know my method works. So I just need to stay consistent. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Consistent and consistency is the key. I mean, they will tell you, say say thank you to you later. Maybe now, you know, they don't understand, but later they will understand and they'll say thank you, Nordin, <laughs> for be- beating us up a little bit. <laughs> I say, look, you don't understand now, but uh, ten years you from will now, later. You're say thank you. Even I remember when I was smaller, you know, telling me something. I'm ah, what do you know? And then you get older, and you were like, wow, I should have listened. You know, it just comes with time, with experience. Yeah, it's like this, I guess it's cyclic. It's the cycle of life, and uh, yep. there's so much people I want to I want to thank. Yes. Then I don't get the chance now to yes, to, to, yes. to see them again. Uh, or they pass away or something, but yeah. it's like, so people I want to say thank you. Even like a, just a, 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 a French teacher or school teacher, you know, mm. any... Anyone, yeah. Even a random person who give me one day an advice. Randomly. And it sticks to you, right? And it sticks. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the power of the words. It's like, a, it shouldn't be underestimated. Yes. So, yeah. So The mind works in mysterious ways, man. Together in the gym. And I will try to to, yeah, to provide the like the best in this direction, and that's why I lo- what, I, what I love about uh, about Edgar is because I, we we think alike, we different, 
But in in the base of especially martial art and the, the values of people, mm-hmm. I think we, we we think a lot alike. He told and me the same I, thing about you. Okay, okay. That he See? thinks that you guys fit. Uh, like you're you're a good fit, you know, like trainer, yeah. sport, or like human beings. That your guys are good fit. That's why he was. Uh, with such a high praise of you, yeah, definitely. And I can see it talking to you. I can see it, man. I can see that you guys will click as well. But listen, we've 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 talked a lot. I think we yeah we could do this a lot of times, and we could talk and talk and talk. Yeah, with you. hours and hours. Uh, I <laughs> yeah. like you, man. You're very good guy. Yeah, same. And same, anything, man. anything from Edgar. Edgar knows me, you know. Like he knows me enough mm-hmm. to to uh, to know that he he cannot. Put me in contact with the uh, like of just course. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I agree. And I sense it, and I and I when he, he tell me, I said yes right away for sure because I know this guy so as a is he has he, he has a value. You know, he's a very good guy, very very good guy. Hundred percent, strong and everything. I like everything about the guy. I like it crazy. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Listen, I'll be I'll be in Dubai probably sometime soon. I'll, I'll, I'll glad to meet you. You know, we can talk in real life. It was so awesome talking to you. I will be I will be pissed if you hear around and we didn't. I, I promise that we'll, we'll we'll have some training sessions at the North sure, Gym. Gym. Be my guest here. Yeah, thank you very much, man, and talk yeah, to you later. Care. Take care. No, quote, I'll be a man. Saron North Gym Talabu. Laiks paskrēja nemanot, ir citi cilvēki, ar kuriem vienkārši var runāt un runāt, un viņš viennozīmīgi ir viens no tiem. Atkārtošos domē, labākais MMA treneris Dubajā viennozīmīgi, ja jūs kaut kādā iemesla dēļ esat tajā galā vai darba dēļ vai atpūsies vai gribat vienkārši paternēties, noteikti uzmeklējiet viņa zāli, dodaties tur, jo augstāk līmeni treniņas ticamāk būs grūti tur atrast. Viņš ir ar milzīgu pieredzi, UFC Bellators, trenējies ar izcilēm prātiem cīņas sportā, George St. Pierre's, Firas Zahabi. Tā kā, jā, garā maišot ar viņu nevar, un uh, ar viņu arī bija interesanti parunāt, pa, dzi, uzklausīt viņa skatu uz dzīvi un, un tā tālāk. Tā kā ceru, ka jums patika, arī Nordijas ļoti iespējams būs apakaļ, jo arī pēc Aruns viņš teica, ka viņam arī laiks ātri paskā, viņam patīk parunāties. Tā kā, jā, un nākamie nedēļas nogalē uh, – Mums ir kārties UFC, šoreiz gan daudz agrāk kā parasti. 11. vakarā jau mums būs Fight Night turnīrs. Derigs Luis pret Spivaku TV3 sporta kanālā, nekur citur, kā jau es to ļoti labi zinat. UFC mājas ar TV3. Un jā, varbūt tā kārts nav tas simpātiskākais uz papīru, bet kā jūs zinat, parasti netie lielākie vārdi parādās labākās cīņas. Tā kā jā. Es ar jums tikšos sestdienas vēlā vakarā, 11. TV3 Sport kanālā, un gaidām jau nākamo nedēļu.